So there's been some developments with the Ronaldo House debacle. Let's get up to speed with what's happened so far. But before I get into that, ladies and gentlemen, please leave a like on this video, share it far and wide, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, let's get into it. Criminals must taste you. Ma'am, can you give me protection from yourself? <laughs> Did I hear that correctly? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newsflash. I'm your host, Joe Emilia. Now, if you don't know the whole Ronaldo House debacle, then please go and watch this video. There's a link in the description. Watch that video first, then come watch this. I will also link that video at the end of this video. Ambud finds IOL broke press code on Ronaldo House video. House alleged violations of eight separate clauses, and the Embud found in his favor on four. Clause 1.8, which originally requires, if practicable, the views of the subject of critical reportage in advance of publication. Clause 1.9, which obliges the media to state whether a report is based on limited information and supplement it once new information becomes available. Clause 2.1, which states that the media shall not allow commercial, political, personal, or other non-professional considerations to influence reporting and avoid conflicts of interest as well as practices that could lead readers to doubt the media's independence and professionalism. And Clause 10.2, which records that pictures and video audio content shall not misrepresent or mislead nor be manipulated to do so. They go on to explain this further. The key problem the Umbud found is that only a short clip of the original six minute video was uploaded. And despite a notice at the end of its article that it would be updated as more information becomes available, IOL did not upload the longer version of the video, even when by its own account, it subsequently came into its possession. This the Umbud found was in breach of clauses 1.9 and 10.2. So IOL published this short edited video, which was probably either done by a journal or a journal asked a friend to do it. I don't know, I, this, there's a lot of speculation, but clearly that small clip was doctored because there's a six minute long video that either wasn't given to the journal or at the time the journal didn't know about it. Either way, the point is when the full video was available, IOL kind of doubled down instead of releasing it. The violation of clause 2.1 arose because instead of uploading the full version of the video when it became available, IOL added a link to an article which takes issue with the contents and context of the longer video. <laughs> so it's very interesting what IOL has done here because remember, there have been other people that have been accused of hate speech in South Africa, those uh, like Julius Malema, for example. And in those cases, context mattered, right? But apparently, if you're white in South Africa, context doesn't matter. At least this is the message that IOL is putting out there. Clause 1.8 was violated because of the manner in which IOL sought comment from Chaos, making it difficult for him to provide a fully informed response to IOL's questions. And that part's very important because a lot of people criticize Ronaldo for the way that he responded to the questions from the journal, right? And about, about the video, because his first response or one of his first responses was, well, it's AI doctored, right? But you also have to take his point of view into consideration because, I mean, he's made thousands of videos, definitely on his current YouTube channel, he's made over 1.3 videos. Now, I don't know if his current YouTube channel has existed since 2014, but regardless, that's a lot of videos over a long period of time. It's unrealistic to expect him to remember every single video and everything he's ever said in every single video. I mean, I myself have had this channel since 2020 and I've made also about 1000 videos. <laughs> There's no way I would remember every single word I've said in every single video, especially if someone gives me a doctored video clip where I know I wouldn't say something like that and just leave it be. Again, I don't agree with him using those words, but context does matter. And it would seem the Umbud agrees. Having found for House on half of his grounds of complaint, the Umbud ordered IOL to publish an apology for breaching the clauses in question. In particular, the apology is for not uploading the full six minutes and 22 seconds of the video when it became available and for not giving House an opportunity to comment on the full video as this could lead readers to doubt IOL's independence and professionalism. 
IOL was also ordered to publish a note that the article has been updated and in its update include both the full video and comments from Ronaldo Haus on that video. The note should state when and how the article has been updated and should include the full apology to Haus as directed. So if context doesn't matter, why would the Ombuds order IOL to apologize and release the full video? Now I do like how this article ends. Nobody will walk away from this messy saga with clean hands. It is hard to see how House partial vindication will do anything to convince his detractors that he's not the nasty racist they perceive him to be. To many, he's just a right-wing pod bro who should stick to his lane. As for IOL, found yet again to have breached the press code, the ruling will, for many, merely confirm that it cannot be trusted. Now, I agree with what this article says about IOL, that they can't be trusted. Uh, I don't think that's news to anyone. But what I don't agree with is the part that they talk about or when they talk about Ronaldo House. Because here's the thing, guys. Ronaldo House has uh, a bit of a following, all right? He's got uh, over 100,000 subscribers. He's got quite a following on social media. And with that comes haters. Now, it is true that the haters probably won't change their mind about Ronaldo House, even if it comes out that or when it comes out that Ronaldo House is innocent in this whole saga. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's not about that. It's not about the haters. It's about a man who's been smeared and is looking for vindication. I personally know exactly what that feels like. And once you get that vindication, you can't put a price on it. And it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what the haters think because they're going to continue to hate, right? What matters is that a man is vindicated. And the woke hive mind of social media will never change their mind, but at least the level-headed civilians that exist in South Africa will then have both sides of the story, will then have the truth, and can decide for themselves. And you know what? Most level-headed people will find that Ronaldo is not racist. Speaking of Ronaldo House's haters, uh, Ronaldo actually encountered one uh, at the airport. Now, I have a clip here. It's undoctored. I haven't cut it up in any particular way. Um, I'm going to present this, what can only be described as an ambush. So I've seen Ronaldo at the airport. I'm just going to ask him what he thinks about his comments and if he's going to take remedial actions to do some equity training, some social justice training. Let's see what he says. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your biggest hey, How are you? What, you? I'm okay, I'm okay. So, I mean, funny bumping into you here, but I thought, because you haven't had any interviews or conversations, I mean, I'm not one to have one. Just one comment. Do you regret using the N-word? Got nothing to say to you. You regret using the K-word. You regret not reporting accurately on the... No, let's have a conversation now. No, no nothing. Uh, no, you think that... Uh, you stop on what it was, was, was well, justified or unjustified. I think you see here. Let's get a bit closer. Got another side. We've got another side. So, what about... Where's your the people? Where's your white jacket? No, it's a whole... No, where's your... Why no, 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 no. aren't you wearing it now? No, for the traveling. But I saw you. Well, then, where's your jacket? I thought jackets and you wasn't to wear. No, the new... The youth of the turn was way in the back to actresses the youth of the N word and the ping word, something like that. No, and that is currently uh what did I how far how far is your disciplinary process? What did I L come out? No, I don't know anyone you know about IOL. But I'm talking to you, but I'm also you I'm not affiliated with IOL. No, but did you see the outcome by the pre song the outcome which said that you didn't do the work? But did I have to apologize? Do you use the word? What's that? And how do you feel? How do you feel about using that word in 2020? Therapy. I didn't use the word in 2010. In 2010, do you think it's justified? Back in the situation, and you see that clearly about it. The answer your question. Uh, I'm on that here. Question. No. Do you think that what Clement Manyatella said is is fair? Mm -hmm. Saying that. We need to do something to show remorse or that you understand why people were angry or hurt. So I've got absolutely nothing to say because everything is the, the apology from 2013, 2016 that you... I'm saying now, you remember no. Parliament now. So people want to have that. Some people didn't even know you made that. But so people want to have it from... Why did you not know? When... Well, I bumped into you now. No, listen. So I'm reaching out to you. It's, it's all good. Listen, 
I do not appreciate being reported while I'm here. But, but, but what, 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 I, what, 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 thank you, ma'am. Can you please, what, what, no, uh, yeah. Okay, see, it's me. So once again, my, my, my DJ is doing question. exactly what he question. does. So, so can you tell us right now? Can you please? Are you going to take some social justice lessons? Can you please try to understand why people are so offended by you using the N word and the K word? I'm asking you to please stop reporting okay, me. Face me. So I tried to ask Ronaldo in person if he regrets using the words that he used. If he's going to take any social justice training, uh, gender, uh, what is it, a racial sensitivity training, just to try to understand why people were offended by his use of the N-word and the K-word and some of the other things that he said, because it wasn't just that. You make a decision on whether you think he responded fairly or not. Any last comment? Thank you, Jamie. I'll see you in court. For what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See you there. Thanks so much, brother. Special place in hell. That was Mighty Jamie, someone who really despises Ronaldo and who probably led the charge against him with this whole mess. All Jamie was trying to do here was virtue signal to his followers. Look at me, I'm confronting the white man, ordering him to apologize and telling him what he should do. Yes, praise me, minions. People like Mighty Jamie, those that hate Ronaldo, uh, and probably even me, will never change their view on Ronaldo, ever. And that's fine. Ronaldo can live in Mighty Jamie's head rent-free. And eventually, when Ronaldo House is vindicated, it will just further expose the left-wing media bias. It will also show that the left woke social media mob can't be trusted and further discredit people like Mighty Jamie. Ronaldo House must still face the South African Human Rights Commission. There's been no real update as to what's happening with that just yet, but you can Bet your bottom dollar, I'll keep an eye on it. Speaking of which, if you want to support Ronaldo House and his legal battle against the South African Human Rights Commission, then please have a look in the description for all the details or the pinned comment. And while you're down there, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I'd really like to hear from you. And also leave a like while you're there. Share this video far and wide and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I've got more content coming your way. And with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, your news flash is in. Hey man, I'd like to apply to drive a Taz. Awesome stuff. Okay, cool. Let's start with the interview. Great stuff. Let's do it. Cool. So first question here. Yeah? So what would your favorite part of the TAS be? Drop suspension. All right, all right. But what about the drop suspension? I mean, I'd like to have the car as low to the ground as possible. You know, to the point where I can't get over speed bumps. Ah, that'd just be ideal. Okay, but wouldn't that be annoying for the people driving behind me? <laughs> yeah. In fact, that's the reason why I'm dropping the suspension. <laughs> I hate people. You just might be perfect. Okay, and sound wise, how would your sound be? Um, I'd say window shattering. I mean, the goal is to be deaf by the age of 30. I want to achieve my goal. Oh, wonderful. Wait, wait, your name would not happen to be Chadley. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Congrats, Chadley. You're now eligible to drive a Taz.